On your uh, computers, how many of you have to look at APRSFI? APRS.FI. Okay? All right. Can, can you show them APRSFI screen there, Bill? I can't. I can get it. Right here. Okay. Now I'm going to slip around here and just point out a couple of things to you. <clears throat> APRSFI is a great program, but it has some limitations. One of the things it will not do is it will not draw polygons, circles, and does a pretty lousy job with, with the objects in general. But uh, if you look here, you'll see it says nice area, okay, meeting. Um, we'll point out one or two of these here. Bill, yeah, here's meeting uh, up here wherever, wherever your uh, walking trails are. Can you go there? Yeah, park and trails, okay? Kind of pay attention to that. It says builds trails and park, okay? Now, if you're looking at that, um, there's not a, it just says, just, just the information that it communicates is just that the icon is sunny. So let's just pretend that Bill originated these icons. This is Bill, this is where he walks, okay? And Bill's trails, and he's put an icon up there, and it's a sun, sunshine. And it may be because Bill's a sunshiny, rosy personality, but he also could be communicating. Remember what I told you earlier? Everything in Apers communicates something. What is, more than likely, what is the weather here at Bill's Trails? Remember, this is updated. Actually, this is going every 10 minutes. So what is the weather here at Bill's Trails if I have a big sunshine out there? Take a guess. Don't be scared to speak up. This is not a test. Okay. We can also put an icon up there that shows cloudy, rain, whatever we want to, so the icon actually tells us something. Uh, I was watching the hurricane come up through me and come up through Florida the other day, and this guy has a hotspot hooked up, and uh, he's not doing anything with it. He doesn't even know he's on acres. It just, he it asked a question, do you want to register your position? He said yes. It put all of his contact information for his hotspot in the comment field, and then it told him to pick out an icon. Well, he thought, well, here's the little yellow house that indicates a house, but he didn't like that. So he picked out the big red house, okay, which is an icon for a shelter, and that's what he put for his, his icon. So in the Fort Myers area, he was the only shelter on Acres, okay? And let me tell you, he got a lot of email over the last course of the last 76 hours, you know, week, whatever, you know, trying to uh, uh, answer those questions. Are you a shelter? And I can only imagine if a few people actually showed up. Okay, why are you coming to me? Well, you're telling everybody in the whole world that you're a shelter. Um, Apers also has some color coding. If it's green, you're good. If it's yellow, caution. Okay, and if it's red, it's an emergency. And that's important to remember that. It, and that's a standard that kind of goes well, worldwide in this, in this world of acres, and it's visible all over the world. If you transmit with a five watt transmitter here, and it gets into the system, it's put into the internet and seen all over the world. That's what makes it so functional, okay? All right, so we've seen Bill's trails and park. That's what it looks like on acres five. If you've got a 400 or one of the newer Yezu handhelds and you're looking at the little tiny screen, even my kid would, you know, it just gives me a direction, points to it, tells me, you know, that he's got a sunny icon, but that's, that's, uh, that's not complete. There's more information laying out there, and I'm gonna hurt your feelings here just a little bit when you're talking about that $500 radio. Uh, I build Acres systems that do a whole lot more for a whole lot less, okay? And we're hams. We like stuff cheap, right? Nod your head, yes. Okay. Now I split back to the uh, to the Acres uh, IS. This is Acres IS 32. Acres IS 32 has some uh, capacity here that uh, UIU 32. And the, I'm talking about Acres clients, client software that goes on your computer. And these were written, uh, some of them were written 20, 25 years ago. Some of them are being written today and being updated today. Uh, I like UIV32, APRS IS32 is good. YAC is another good one. 
uh, uh, Exaciter, if you're in Linux, is, is a fantastic program. But uh, they have the full capability to handle the APRS packet and to interpret it and to give you the information that goes along with it. Let's go back and zoom in on Bill's trails right here at the park. Okay, a little bit closer. Now, what we're seeing here, there is, that's a nice green line all the way around it, okay? You'll never see that on your 100, 200, 300, or 500 radio. You'll never see that on the 400. It doesn't have the capacity to display lines and when it's displaying objects. But this green line is being transmitted by a radio. And it's telling everybody that inside this area, is Bill's Trails. There's a park here. And if you click on Bill's Trails, Bill, <coughs> Bill walks here. He's listening on voice alert at 146.520. That information is being sent out every 10 minutes, okay, by a radio transmitter. That's not coming just over the internet. We're receiving it over the internet, but that's being transmitted by a radio. The circle is being transmitted by a radio. The icon for the sun. The information about Bill. Bill walks here, 146, 520. And of course, the other one there tells the center of the area that it's a park, okay? So if you're coming to this area and you see that on your handheld, you're not going to get a whole lot of that information. You can get the textual information, but you have to kind of fish for it to get it. But if you're using an Acres client, you not only get that information, but you also get the line drawn around it, and it's green, which tells us that Bill is okay in that area. Everything's fine. But now what if Bill changes that line to red? He's got a problem, right? He needs some assistance. It might cause us to look at it a little closer. Let's zoom back out just a little bit. Now, <clears throat> these objects have been placed on the internet. When we first started doing these demonstrations, we went around the idea of MCOM, okay, emergency communications. And we would set up these little disaster scenarios, and they got so real that whenever we, one time we were doing it, we had 911 dispatchers sitting in the room with us. They stopped the display. They stopped the demonstration to bring it to a halt. Why? They said, well, that's too real. If this gets out onto the Internet, you're going to, you're going to make a, a mess big time. Okay, I mean, it's just a train wreck. There's no big cars in the river, four red, red cross shell or something, you know. And, and, but we took their, their point and said, wait a minute here. Uh, maybe we do need to back up and rethink whether or not we just demonstrate this with the MCOM and demonstrate it in a little bit more reasonable manner, a manner that, which is, uh, you know, not going to get everybody tore all to pieces. But if you're in MCOM, and if you think in MCOM, this could be where the bad car wreck was. 